That was uh, not a bad introduction. Thank you very much for coming to hear the Sol Gold story. I've, uh, I've got a big story to tell, only uh, 15 minutes to do, so I'll, uh, I'll be moving through these slides pretty quickly. But we have made uh, the world's uh, largest and best copper gold discovery in a porphyry system in Ecuador. So we've made Ecuador our project. It's uh, being focused on with the Alpala project at the moment, but uh, we're looking for these things right through the spine of Ecuador. It's the same geology as you get in northern Chile. There's 700 kilometer, 750 kilometres of strike and three uh, prospective belts, and we are looking to build Sol Gold into the world's best uh, copper gold major. We announced a, uh, a maiden resource statement a year ago at uh, 5.2 million tonnes of copper and 12.6 uh, million ounces of gold. I am confidently targeting doubling that when we put the, uh, the new one out coming uh, uh, this November. So uh, without too much further ado, I'll read that quickly, I'll test you at the end. We started this project in the Solomon, this company rather, in the Solomon Islands in 1997, but the uh, geology was too hard, the systems weren't oxidised, the grades weren't high enough, the terrain was too difficult to, and too much rain. So uh, we figured out that you need big oxidised systems, big metal bearing uh, oceanic slabs sub subducting underneath uh, uh, the continental slabs that crack and allow porphyry systems in. So we went to the world's greatest copper theatre, the uh, uh, Andean Copper Belt, and found uh, Ecuador. Ecuador had been basically unexplored be because they'd been focusing on uh, oil production and a uh, very different sort of terrain cover uh, to what you get in, uh, in Chile. So the most important thing is oxygen for these systems. Oxygen scavenges the iron, makes magnetite, that makes them detectable using airborne magnetic systems and concentrates the copper and gold into the sulphide phase. That's why these things are rich and the Carnegie Ridge bringing in lots of metal uh, is why they're so big. And there's a lot of these things all through Ecuador. We got a four-year jump on the rest of the industry and picked out 10 of the best. If you superimpose the geology of Ecuador over no northern Chile, you see that we have the potential to ultimately define about 20% of the world's copper resources, and it'll be all 100% owned under one roof. We have very high grades in the Alpala uh, prospect at uh, Cascabel, and that's going to mean that we can bootstrap development without needing to go external uh, funding too much, and, and that way we should be able to get our production operations in future projects funded internally. So um, there won't be too many more opportunities to get into new uh, equity in, uh, in Sol Gold. So uh, mirror image the geology from northern Chile into Ecuador, and that's what we're looking at. And we got a four-year jump on the rest of the industry defining these things. Why have there been none discovered there in the past? Well, it's basically because of the weather in Chile, where there's heaps of them. You've got no cloud, no rain, no soil, no vegetation cover, and you stub your toe on them when you walk over this uh, very prospective country. In Ecuador, however, there's plenty of cloud, there's rain, there's soil development uh, and vegetation cover, and you need airborne magnetics that has really come a long way in the last 30 years while they were looking for oil in other countries, and now we can apply that technique all through uh, Ecuador, and that's what's helping to identify where these projects are. And it tells us that the uh, Eocene, or the, the Jurassic, the Eocene and the Miocene uh, belts that are so, um, uh, so full of copper and gold in Chile and Peru uh, should also yield these very large systems in Ecuador. So Ecuador is our oyster, and we expect to find a lot of pearls in it. So we currently have just on 1.7 billion shares on issue a market cap of uh, 644 million pounds sterling, which sounds like a lot, but when you have one of the world's best uh, copper gold projects um, under your wing, uh, it's terrifyingly small. BHP obviously think it's cheap. They bought that 6% stake off uh, Guyana Gold's gold fields recently without even telephoning us. Uh, so uh, they didn't... Uh, 
they didn't need, need to do too much inquiry into due diligence. Newcrest, obviously, like us, they are the company's largest shareholder individually at the moment, um, but they can't use their stake to block any good uh, corporate change of did, uh, control deal going forward. So we're glad to have Newcrest there, um, but they can't make uh, life difficult for us, and they certainly provide a lot of great technical advice when it comes to uh, block caving through Kate Craig Jones, who's uh, one of the world's great block caving experts. And block caving will certainly be the applicable mining technique when we come to uh, exploiting the uh, Alpala resource. And we're working on a preliminary economic analysis at the moment, and that's going uh, according to schedule and budget. And uh, we expected to demonstrate uh, potential for a, a very robust mine development uh, in the future. None of this would be possible without a tremendous team of people, and I'm blessed by uh, one of the best technical teams in the world, in my view. Jason Maud um, is a remote operations specialist. He gets us um, into areas and sets up operations uh, faster and more efficiently and with more community success than I've ever heard of in any other team in the world. Uh, he's with us today, and you'll be able to talk to him uh, after the presentation. Once we get there, Dr. Steve Garwin, Newmont trained porphyry expert, um, he, he basically identifies the zonation in these systems and guides us to what we need to do. And Ben Whistler, the technical services manager, does it in spectacularly efficient fashion. So we've had 12 drilling rigs there operating last year. They've been spitting, about, spitting out about 10,000 metres a month. We've got 132 drill hole penetrations through the ore body for about 145,000 metres of uh, drilling. This has all been done for about $100 million of, uh, of uh, exploration expenditure. That's been very efficient uh, expenditure in terms of the uh, cost of discovering that uh, 5 million tonnes of copper and 12.6 million ounces of gold so far, which we expect to be able to uh, double when we put the new resource statement out. This is all in a country where the government is actually trying to help you. Uh, lots of countries try to, try to make life difficult. Um, in Ecuador, however, advised by Wood Mackenzie, they're putting a lot of effort into making it one of the world's great mining jurisdictions. Tax rates are coming down uh, and getting through some of the permitting procedures in the various government departments is getting easier and easier. That's been shown by uh, Lundin, who are developing the Fruta del Norte project in southeastern uh, Ecuador to be uh, a process that majors can now uh, address without uh, the fear that they once held for the country. So uh, BHP is there, Newcrest is obviously there. BHP and Newcrest are both in uh, Sol Gold, um, BHP without even calling us. Uh, Lundy and Gold is spending many hundreds of millions developing the Fruta del Norte project there. Hancock Prospecting holds um, most of the ground around the southern side of uh, Cascabel. As you can see there, the blue tenement. And uh, we also have Cadelco on the north uh, western side of the project and, uh, and Newcrest exploring nearby as well. So there's many hundreds of millions of dollars of exploration funding going into this um, very prospective newly discovered region at which Alpala, which is one of the world's great projects, is, uh, is centre. So we have the first uh, mover advantage there. We have more geologists on the ground exploring for copper, I think, than BHP or Rio do. We have 86 geologists on the ground in Ecuador uh, <clears throat> in the most unexplored uh, terrain in, in one of the world's richest copper belts. So that uh, augurs well for the upside for Solgold. We own 85% of the project through uh, ENSA, and uh, we've spent uh, about $100 million to date uh, on this project. And uh, Cornerstone, the junior partner, have to re repay their share of uh, all of the money to get to feasibility uh, from the proceeds uh, from the, uh, the development and from, uh, from the uh, Cascabel licence. Uh, if they don't contribute it, at least 10%, they dilute to a 0.5% NSR, and Solgold can buy that for three and a half million dollars. So um, it's a great structure and um, uh, we're, we're pushing as hard as we can to get this project uh, to a development stage. 
So we've got a project that has a very rich core. Uh, it has high grades anyway. If you average every single metre of drill core, you get a higher grade than the entire Cobray resource. Um, that's, uh, that's a great outcome. If you had this project in the high and dry Chilean Andes, you'd be happy, but it's not there. It's at a place where we have a sealed highway through it. We have a hydroelectric power network 25 kilometres away. We have a river with water in it that runs through the tenement. We have ports, two of them, 100 and 150 kilometres away. We have a labour source. You can drive there, drive there in three hours from the nation's capital. Just the water for Escondida cost three billion. Um, we can see such huge capex savings here compared to a Chilean project that it's going to be really competitive from a, a capital point of view once we, we get to uh, development. We start with airborne magnetics. That tells us where the porphyry systems are because they're nice and oxidised with lots of magnetite in them. That tells us where the smoke is, the fires are uh, given away by the geochemistry. So we want manganese holes uh, from hot, wet, intrusive systems. Uh, soil molybdenum tells us where um, they're fertile and they're pregnant with copper uh, when we have high copper to zinc ratios. That led us to the Alpala cluster in the southern part of the tenement, which we took mobile man portable rigs in to. We're, we're getting down to nearly two and a half kilometres with a man portable rig, setting new drilling records all the time um, through um, uh, Hubbard Drilling, fantastic drill operator, and getting some of the world's best porphyry intersections. We sit happily in the company of projects like Oyo Tolgai, Grassberg, Cadia. These are multi-billion dollar world-class tier one projects, and we sit in that party. Last year, 12 point, uh, 12.3 million ounces of gold, uh, 5.2 million, million tonnes of uh, copper to find. Um, I'm actually not supposed to add those together, but um, if you pass grade one maths, you can. And uh, we found this very efficiently, all in costs of about $550 uh, dollars a metre. That's drilling, assaying, geologists support everything. It's a very efficient program for the metal that we found. The black outline there was the December 2017 uh, uh, mineral resource estimate outline. Um, the red is what's coming at you. It's getting bigger. You can see from, from a high grade point of view and from an overall resource size point of view, you can see it's getting bigger. In a diagnostic section, we've been able to infill holes that were in the high grade resource and you can see uh, why and how and where um, that's getting bigger too. So this is becoming incredibly robust. It's going to be attacked uh, using a block cave uh, and panel cave underground development strategy, which is environmentally good. It's got a nice rich core. As you can see there, those grades on the end one are not a typo error. They're real. Um, so this is the stuff that we'll be focusing on from an early point of view. And of course, we're very interested in the bornite um, that's in the core of this system, and we seem to have found uh, another core in hole 64 on the northwestern side of Alpala, and my mind boggles at uh, what might be up there as we continue to expand the Alpala footprint. Um, in comparison to some of the world's other block cave operations, that's what we're looking at, and the, uh, uh, the pink outline there shows how we will uh, concentrate on higher grades to get this operation going using an underground block cave uh, development with about six kilometres of declining uh, to get into. It will take the upper lip lift first uh, and then get into uh, the guts of the ore body so we can grandfather our, our way into it. The other tenements through the spine of the country you can see they're held in four different um, subsidiaries. Uh, Blanca, uh, Rio Amarillo and Cisne Loja have very high epithermal gold grades and we're very interested in the Blanca tenement. Um, it sits um, up in, um, uh, in, in the north of uh, the country, eight kilometres from um, the edge of the, uh, uh, the, the Cascabel tenement. Um, it's had artisanal miners all over the top of it. That seven kilometre ingot there was um, extracted by one of them out of um, some ore that he loaded into the back of his pickup truck. So very high grades, outcrops at 600 and 
uh, 20 grams a tonne. Uh, I think that's higher than the outcrop grades at uh, Fruta del Norte. So this is going to be very handy for uh, helping the development of um, uh, Alpala. La Hueca Target 6 in the south of the country looks just like uh, Alpala. Um, there's some, uh, a whole hill of epithermal gold mineralisation at Cisno Loja over about three and a half square uh, kilometres. Um, you go into these creeks, yeah, there's plenty of gold, pan gold everywhere, but the important thing is the magnetite we find tells you these porphyries um, are present. Um, they look just like Alpala, they've got plenty of copper in them. Um, when you see them outcropping, it looks like some of the Alpala core. It's one of the most beautiful exploration vectors that, um, that, it, you could, that you could have. We protect ourselves with very strong uh, social security cordons around the uh, uh, project. We in, endorse the local uh, small industries. We employ the people. We look after them. Uh, we help educate them. We look after their health. Uh, and we make them part of that, this project. We, in, we apply this strategy at all levels, community, local government, federal government, all through the country, um, so that we get on uh, and they help to look after us. So um, this is a summary slide which I'll leave open here for you, but basically we have the most active team, money in the bank, one of the world's best discoveries in the first of 11 projects in a company that's still undervalued in a 750 kilometre long slab of the world's most heavily endowed and richest copper belts, the Andean uh, copper belt. And uh, we got a four year first mover advantage going at building one of the world's great copper majors. Thank you.